post, Jesse. So I didn't say, I haven't said anything since that last appointment, but tomorrow is actually a surgery. I have to be there at 6.45 a.m. Not looking good, I can tell you that for sure, but uh, they're gonna, supposedly where this is, there's a tumor behind my colon. What the guy was telling me is they're gonna cut and remove a section of my colon and depending on the tools, I guess this place doesn't have as sophisticated stuff as some other places do. If they can remove it fully with what they have, then I guess they're going to. But if they can't, I guess he's not going to touch it. And then they're going to refer me somewhere else, that, which would kind of make sense to do that at the beginning. But at the beginning, but. This is a dumb fucking place down here, so. I guess some of these other places have equipment where you can actually scan through the colon without having to do anything to it. But even that wouldn't make any sense, even if you're just scanning through it to see. You're still gonna have to fucking remove it to get to where it's at. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I still really don't have a fucking clue as to what exactly they're doing, but. I know that he said it, that they're going to try to remove it, and they're going to biopsy it all at the same time, but I don't know. I've just kind of shut up about it, because I don't even give a fuck anymore. The guy actually was kind of being pissy with me, which I thought was strange, but the doctor, he's like, "Why? Well, I don't like how you're not too concerned. I'm like, well, what do you want me to say? I mean, shit. What, what can I do about it? Nothing. You want me to sit here and start bawling and act like a baby? I, I don't fucking care. I don't understand why people get all worked up about shit. Yeah, I'll probably be upset if it's as bad as I'm pretty sure it's going to be, but I'm damn good at not showing emotions, so it, it's not a big deal. Unless it's animal related, then I can't. Uh, it's, it's insane. I've never cried at a single funeral I've been to. Well, my two dogs died. I absolutely was a wreck, and I mean a wreck. When Connor died, and that's the first time that I had, like, I could pick him up. I guess he wouldn't let me pick him up with his big ass Akita. He, that bastard was heavy. They had to let me out the back door of that place and everything that day. I, I couldn't handle it. Only thing that made it easier is he was already. We had to put him to. Every time that I took him there, basically, we had to put him to sleep so they could look at him if it was something major, because he's just like this one in here. They're a very protective dog, so. God, that was awful. It was absolutely awful. I wasn't even all expect prepared for all that. And it, the way that all started that morning was I had taken him to another place down here in Vienna. And that woman was such a bitch. She said that they don't see Akitas. I'm like, all I'm asking you to do is I have to put him to sleep. I literally spent the entire night getting myself prepared for it. And, and that, oh, you wouldn't believe how bad that threw everything off. Then I had to bring him back home and then we had to call. I called and scheduled it at the other place and they couldn't get him till five in the evening. So I didn't want to dig a hole or anything during the day, so I spent time with him all day. And When I got home, it was like 6.30 at night, and it was 95 fucking degrees outside. My ground out here is basically like trying to shovel through rock on this side. And plus, I'm crying insanely. I could, it was awful. It took me months to get over that. I couldn't even freaking talk. He'd always come in there and stick his head on the bed in the morning and just stare at me until I got up. Now this one in here is totally opposite. He's in the bed with me no matter what. Anyway, I got off track there, but there, there was just nothing, nothing really that I could say to him. I mean, I, I don't know what you want me to say. whoop de do. According to him, he said that mine's three centimeters that he's removed them that's been up to eight centimeters and they've just lived a normal life. It just depends because mine's at a fucked up place, of course. 
I'm not allowed to eat out for eight hours before and I really should pay attention to what people say. I gotta remember what they fucking said now. No water. I have to have a driver. And I guess it's just in and then I'll leave and then they'll call with the results, but they said that it'll be on that stupid app. Like I think you'd better call if it's if it's bad. That would make sense, but and it's gonna be. I mean, I know it is. The fact of the matter is that I've been telling these people for over a year that I know something's going on with my colon. I'm not dumb. And they've ignored me over and over and over. So if it's if it is what I think it is, and it's farther advanced than it should be, it's gonna be their goddamn fault because they could have caught it a long time ago. This guy said that he was glad that I had had that scan because that's you know that's how they they found out. But well, I've had other scans actually, and I've said I've literally been requesting you people to do something with it for a year. And you just kept ignoring me. They kept saying that most of it was heartburn shit and all this kind of crap. I was like, that's not it. I, I know for a fact something's wrong, but now I am going to be pissed off if that is the case and it's further along than it should be. Be a good lawsuit for my mother, but but again, if it is, what well, whatever. I don't even fucking care anymore. It's not a big deal. As long as I live long enough to see the end of my dog's life and that's it I don't give a shit you can fucking cut it off right there that same day put me in the ground you should probably have to after after this one in here this one in here is going to be the hardest one I've ever had to go through him and I have just been it's a, a very totally different kind of bond but that's because I was stuck home with him all the time too and we're just always around each other He's a big old baby. You know, it pisses me off sometimes, but still. So, I don't think it's a very long procedure. And they, they haven't even been specific about that. I, I thought it, what they were doing was giving me a pill and a camera and all this kind of shit to do that, but I guess that's not what they're doing. I don't even think that they're going to cut into me. I don't understand how you're going to do something without cutting into me, but... I guess they've got all this kind of weird shit today that they can go through your mouth and all that other crap. And if it's in a weird place in my colon, though, you'd think they'd go through my stomach. Or, I don't know. Or maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe they are going to cut me all the fuck up. I, I don't know. I just don't ask questions anymore. Like, whatever. Do what you're doing, and if I wake up, so be it. If not, whoop de do. It's not like I'll know, so who cares? Anyway. I just haven't said anything about it because this is just not a big deal anymore. But we'll see. It's tomorrow morning at 6.45. I have to go in for prep shit. I got to actually get ready here in a minute and go in for some kind of blood test and stuff. And she asked me some really dumb fucking questions on the phone, but now I can't even remember. One of them she said was I thought was the absolute dumbest thing I ever heard. fuck was it? I'll never remember it. I know I won't, so. Alright, well, we'll see how I am tomorrow. Get ready for the bad news, because I guarantee you it's going to be bad. But you won't see no balling from me, because those days are over with. They've, this past two years have destroyed that entire side of me that I just don't give a fuck about anything. Absolutely nothing. Nothing bothers me. Except trans people. And the group. And I won't go there. <laughs> That's it. See ya.